guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I had to adjust my camera a little bit today. This bun is high. I haven't worn a bun like this in so long. Complete side note, this reminds me of my university days when I would use a sock bun slash leg warmer to get a gigantic bun. But anyways, welcome to August Favorites. I'm gonna be showing you everything that I loved throughout the month of August. I'm gonna approach this a little bit differently today. I'm gonna to start with the beauty and hair and body products that I've been loving this month. And then I'm gonna follow up with what I've been doing this month to take care of myself. Um, if you've been following me on Instagram, I've been talking a lot about this and I feel like it's unfortunate because I don't have the ability to hop onto YouTube the same way I can Instagram stories and chat and be, you know, not that I'm not myself in a beauty video, but you're here to watch a favorites video. You're not here to watch me ramble, even though that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So in the second half of that video, I'm going to get into a little bit more of that, whether you want to stay or not, it's up to you, but let's go ahead and get started. So first off, I want to talk about a lip product that I'm really, really loving. I actually have a full collection here because I thought, wow. They are loud in a dollar a tin. Um, I shot a lip swatch reel of these, so I will have that link down below if you want to see all of the colors. I love every single one of these. And it's a lot of the time, like, you guys are so sweet and will compliment me on my lip swatch videos and be like, they all look good on you, but I don't always feel that way. But I think I felt this way about these shades, and there's something about the formula. I think because it's not full color, it's moussey, which generally isn't my preference. It's not transfer proof or anything like that. I personally am not generally like I, I would rather a good formula and a good color over something that's going to last on my lips for the next 72 hours you know what I mean um so I really really love the finish of these specifically I love the shade sugarholic uh there's another shade that's more of a mar called marshmallow something marshmallow madness these are probably my top two picks but I will link that lip swatch video down below did I tell you what they are they're the wet and wild cloud pout marshmallow lip mousses and yeah I'm really really enjoying them and if you're curious about the makeup I'm wearing, I didn't film a tutorial. I was a little cheeky today. It's very rare that I ever do my makeup and I'm not filming an Instagram reel or a YouTube video. So for me to be able to sit down and do my makeup just for myself feels so good. And it's so hot in Toronto and I never, I don't wear a lot of makeup if I'm not filming. So it's very rare that I'm putting on makeup just for me. So that's what I did today. But it is a lot of makeup from mostly full face from my monthly makeup basket. I just reached into it. So I'll have that link down below. And as always, everything I'm wearing will be linked down below too. Uh, recently, I reviewed the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. That could have easily ended up here in a favorite. The kind of only reason it isn't is like, I don't really love having to mix the shades. I love the formula. I think it's really beautiful. Again, I'll link that review. Plenty of links down below if you need some more information. But in reviewing that, I also really fell in love with this primer. It just feels luxurious. It sits on the skin like, and I know normally like sitting on the skin is a bad thing, but it sits on the skin in such a beautiful way. Um, it says it has a crystal, gives you crystal like skin. It brightens, it has vitamin C. It is the Wet n Wild Glass, oh, double Wet n Wild, Wet n Wild Glass Correct Primer. Now, of course, if you have um, a lot of things on your skin that you're looking to correct, this is not going to give, like, it's not going to take that away. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but what it does do is it adds a really, really nice hydrating base that's not greasy or sticky or, like, super silicone-y feeling, like it's going to make your makeup slip around. I wouldn't say that this is, like, top pick for somebody that has oily skin, but if you have normal, even combo skin, if you're using something more matte, if your skin feels dehydrated, if your foundation feels like it's just, like, not getting like it's sitting on the skin and looking dry and things like that. I just think there's something about the way that this feels um, that really, really feels like a high end um, primer and it feels really, really high quality. So definitely check this out. From Rimmel, they actually launched a new concealer, which is super exciting. I am a huge fan of almost every brand's drugstore concealer, every drugstore brand's concealer now. Every drugstore brand pretty much has come out with a great concealer pretty much, or they're all getting there. And Rimmel is here now. This is the Rimmel Multitasker Concealer. Uh, it has that similar shape and feel to good old shape tape. Are we still using that as a guide? As a comparison, I'm probably dating myself by using shape tape now. Things move very quickly around here, but this is the Multitasker Concealer. It's meant to have higher coverage, good lasting power, um, and I really, really like it. It does exactly what I need a concealer to do. I'm happy to see Rimmel coming out with this. I would love to see some more shades in there. I think there's 12 shades, uh, but the range is definitely, it could be a little bit more expanded when it comes to medium to deeper skin tones. So looking at you Rimmel to, to, to do that, but the concealer itself is really, really beautiful. I like the finish. I like how it wears. You only need a little bit uh, and you can also use it for highlighting and contouring, which I really, really like too. 
Recently I did a Glossier haul and try on and I'm actually just testing out the mascara again today because I felt like the day that I wore it, it looked so good. But then by the end of the day, it was like the tips of my lashes no longer looked as black as they once did, which I never experienced that with a mascara before. So I'm wearing it again today to test it out. But I did repurchase um, or kind of purchase another shade of their Wowder. I want to point this out. I'll link the video down below. A lot of you commented how good my skin looked after I powdered with this. And yeah, there's something about this powder. I love that it comes in like a kind of a shade range. So I ended up picking up G8 to G10 for my under eyes and then I used G5 to G7 on my face. They don't have a ton of color. It's not super, super pigmented, but I did want something a little bit brighter for my under eyes. It is a loose powder, which we know how I feel about loose powder. I have a little bit of disdain for you, but the formula is amazing and it's not that messy. It has the little mesh bit in here. Um, so it actually does stay relatively clean. If you're gonna give me a pressed powder, do it like this, you know? Um, so I really like it. I had a good experience shipping from Glossier to Canada, from Glossier to Canada. I mean, I don't know where it's coming from, probably LA or something, but good experience shipping with them. No customs, it didn't take a long time. I also tried out their liquid bronzer. So as I mentioned, linked in the description. As you may have saw on Instagram, I partnered with Clinique recently to host their skin school and I was kind of picking through all my Clinique makeup and just revisiting the brand. And in doing that, I was picking through my highlighter drawer and came across this. Now this is actually an eyeshadow. This is one of the Clinique Lid Pops in Petal Pop. And if you're wondering what my highlighter is today, it's this. Although I'm looking in camera, I'm like, does it look too harsh? I can't tell. Looked good when I put it on, but anyways, um, this I love as a highlighter. It looks pink, but it really has more of like a gold shift to it. I have it on my inner corner today too, and it's just one of those um, formulas that's baked, so it's like pressed in really, really hard, but you don't need a dense brush to use it. It has beautiful pigmentation. There's no chunks or glitter or anything in there. It gives a really, really beautiful finish on the skin, uh, and I've been using this like a lot, and what I love about this petal line from them, whether it's the blush or the eyeshadows, is even as you use it, the flower stays, which I really appreciate. Like, come on, half the reason I'm buying this is because the flower. Moving on to a new product that I've been loving for my body. Uh, this is the KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub with 10% AHA from First Aid Beauty. They've got a lotion as well. Um, and I have been uh, having some KP on the back of my arms. I tackled it, it was gone, but I don't know what happened. This arm? Can the sun do something to it or something? For some reason, this arm just started getting it really bad again. So I've been making use of this and really, really loving it. It's good for sensitive skin. It's got AHAs in there, microdermabrasion, um, and like a chemical peel at once is what they're saying that it is. Uh, it has glycolic acid and lactic acid. They're saying it gets rid of bumps, roughness, and stubborn areas, and it really, really does. I also love that you get a decent amount of product in here because you're using it on your body. Uh, and how I use this is I'll actually, um, I don't always do this in the shower. I'll kind of treat it out of the shower or I'll kind of like make sure not to get my arm wet so that I can really get it on there, let it sit, even though they don't necessarily recommend that. But um, I really feel like it's helping to make a difference and tackle the little bumps on the back of my arms. My hair has felt so dry and just been driving me bonkers lately. Uh, doing a lot of like second and third day styling and I've talked about this before, but I just wanna mention it because it was such a game changer for me when it came to my curls. It's just a mister bottle with water in it. But instead of grabbing a spray bottle or previously I wet my hair under the sink, this just distributes the water very well in a little bit of a mist format. Wow. Um, but it really just doesn't make my hair wet. But it, like this morning I was trying to figure out what to do with my hair and, and the curls were kind of tight and bunched and I was like, I'm going to do something up. So then I just put a little bit of this in my hair, a little bit of leave in and like something to slick it back. And it just makes my life so much easier. Um, a new line that I've been loving from Maui Moisture. Uh, I My curls are like probably medium coarseness. They're really not that coarse at all. People are always very surprised when they touch my hair that it feels light. It like picks up color and tones really easily and things like that. Um, nothing else about it is easy. This helps make it a little more easy. I freaking love the color. This is my favorite color. Is it chartreuse? This is the Maui Moisture um, Lightweight Curls Flaxseed Conditioner for fine to medium curls. I've heard of like people using flaxseed. I've made a flaxseed egg or I tried to make a flax egg one time um, and it didn't go very well. <laughs> I ended up using an egg egg. But I've also heard of people using flaxseed in their hair, which is, um, I've never tried that. So um, this is a much better way than me going to bulk barn and buying flax seeds myself. So this has pure flaxseed, quenching coconut water, sheer citrus oil, silicone free, and something else about Maui Moisture if you've never used their products or even if you've use them, uh, the first ingredient in them is aloe, which is fascinating to me. That's so cool. It's like a why didn't I think of that uh, instead of water, which is going to be better for your hair. And then finally, this is a product I've used 
um, on and off for years. The packaging has changed. I'm not sure if this is the current packaging because I just found it in my like extra products bin. It's a Canadian brand. They're out of Toronto. Um, I actually want to visit their salon. I, I had debated it when I first moved to Toronto, but this is from Curl Keeper. This is their original total control for frizzy hair. And hear how liquidy it is? It's so watery, um, but it's also a gel. So if you have my hair texture, this is a really nice, even if you want to use it on second day curls, you can. I've used it on first day. There's something about the texture that is just really, really light and gives a good hold, no crunch. Um, the less movement of that occurs during the drying stages, the more control you'll have over frizz. It says you can use it every day without product buildup for frizz-free curls, which I think is cool, effective in all weather, 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 weather conditions, etc., etc. Um, and then it says you can re-wetting frizzy areas will actually reactivate it. I haven't really tested that out, but it's such a great lightweight product. I purchased this from... Ooh, I'll have to link it below. There's a website that I've bought it from a bunch of times. It's a... Uh, Beauty Supply. The name has lost me for some reason. But anyways, really, really great and Canadian brand. Okay, so sorry if there was a weird jump cut there. I filmed five minutes of me rambling and really said nothing. So I wanted to try again. Um, I guess what I want to kind of want to talk to you about is, like I said on Instagram, it's very easy for me to hop on and kind of give you my thought of the day. And I've been talking a lot how I've been struggling with anxiety and depression. And it's a lot harder to talk about on YouTube because it's more permanent, I'm not getting feedback, it's not quickly just me hopping on, it's like I feel like it needs to be fully formed and it's going to live here forever and it's my vulnerable thoughts and feelings so I'm really really unsure of how to uh, approach things that doesn't feel like it adds extra anxiety to my already ongoing anxiety but I think it's so important to talk about because the more I've begun to share and talk about it the amount of feedback and people who are um, responding to me and saying like I can relate to you so for example these are some of the things that have been happening on my Instagram so for example I went out for a walk I've been trying to get out every single day I work from home I don't have co-workers I you know it's an isolating time in the world and I'm getting out every single day to go for a walk I'm spending my time at the park I'm going on TikTok I'm on the phone I'm voice noting it's not like I'm out talking to birds and smelling the flowers I am not I mean I live in downtown Toronto but there's a lot of birds and flowers here. But anyways, <laughs> uh, it's not like I'm out like, ah, oh, oh, walk and da-da-da. I'm out to um, do do whatever I want. Like, I felt all this guilt to to go out and listen to be a particular way or whatever. I'm like, I just need to get out of the freaking apartment. And, like, I show myself, I'm like, sometimes on anxiety walks, you have anxiety. And I'm showing, like, a tear coming down my face. And, again, like, I'm not doing any of this for, like, pity or tips or help. It's just to show that, like, this is something that's going on. Because what I noticed was when I started using TikTok, people are so vulnerable and honest there. And it brought me so much relief. Like, I could get so upset thinking about how much relief I've garnered from absolute strangers who haven't even been talking about something that I can necessarily relate to, but you can relate to the feeling. You can relate to, I cope like that, or I isolate myself, or I tend to whatever it may be. And you're just like, I'm a human. I'm a human. We have feelings. We have good days and bad days. But I think what's really, really hard is I know that I'm so hard on myself. And a lot of us are so hard on ourselves and the way that we talk to ourselves, you would never talk to a friend or I hope a friend or a family member or anybody like that. I'm like, I need to start treating myself like I treat other people. And I need to have the self-awareness to recognize that I haven't been kind to myself. And if you're not being kind to yourself, your thoughts and your feelings like I don't want to get, you know, too far down the road here, but it becomes your reality, you know? I'm an analytical person. I'm an overthinker. I have anxiety. I walk away from every single conversation. And I'm like, was I the worst person ever? Like, you know, we, we all have these thoughts and feelings, but we don't talk about it. And then you feel isolated in it. And you're like, am I the only one? I'm... Who, like, who am I? And I'm, I'm what am I? And, I? and, you know, then you play the comparison game of, you know, they had it worse or they have it better. And it's it's overwhelming. No matter what you have going on in your current world, the world itself is very hard too. So th there's just so much going on and I think it's so important for us to give ourselves patience and grace like we would anybody else in our lives. And for some reason, it's like, you can make a mistake. You can whatever, but I can't, right? Me, I hold myself to a different standard and it's impossible. 
So I've been doing things like thanking myself for taking care of myself, as silly as that may seem. Um, it, it started really a couple of years ago when I started making my bed every day, as cliche as that is. Um, it became an act of like, I'm, what I'm trying to do ultimately is find the balance of things that are immediately gratifying in the moment, like me staying in bed till 8.45 this morning and scrolling TikTok, and the other uh, kind of delayed gratification of me making sure to do like my 10 minute tidy in the morning because I tend to let my apartment get very, very messy, if I'm being honest, and I don't have people coming over and stuff, so I'm like, I need to keep my apartment clean for me. And that may seem absolutely heinous for you to hear, but that's me and there's other people like it and you shouldn't judge me for that and i don't judge you for it and i think that that's what's so important is we are humans we are emotional people we go through things life is hard if you have a physical wound you wouldn't you know just let it go we have mental wounds we have mental scars we have things that stop us and scare us and um i think we all feel a lot of guilt and shame and i think that sucks because it again isolates us further into um feeling alone and on the other side of all these things that have happened lately i feel like i have a lot more empathy and understanding for people and not everybody has come out like that and being able to have the self-awareness and ability to reflect on like my role in situations and my role in my own life and how i've been speaking to myself for my whole life and things like that i'm like okay well if there's a bunch of things that i need to do that i've been told will be helpful then i need to actually try those things Again, it sounds obvious. It's like, everyone's like, get out for a walk, you'll feel better. I'm like, no, I don't want to go for a walk. I feel like crap. But I know I've never regretted, for the, I don't think, going for a walk, maybe one or two. But then I'm like, okay, you just do it. It's not about me wanting to do it. Because if it was about me wanting to do it, honestly, I wouldn't be sitting here and filming this video. It's very, very hard when I have um, such feelings of depression and anxiety to come here and talk to you. It's the same way if you have any other job, you're at work and your head is foggy and things like that. So I just think it's really important and you may not be like, you know, people don't want to hear a lot from YouTubers often. <laughs> you might, you know, it's, it's hard for me to talk like this and that's why it's easier on Instagram. But I don't know, I want to continue to talk about this, talk about my methods and thoughts and books and things I'm listening to and reading and resources and I'm always sharing things on Instagram. So. This is not like me plugging my Instagram to say like, come follow me, but I really feel like a lot of people have connected with me on Instagram in a way that they couldn't on YouTube because it's just not, it's not the same functionality. And so many people have reached out and said like, I didn't know you were this funny, or I didn't know you thought like this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got, you know, I've had a lot of things happen in the past two years, like everybody else. And, you know, I'm a little bit of a different person, definitely, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more whatever on on instagram i'm a little bit of a shithead i'm not gonna lie <laughs> you might see it a little bit here on youtube time to time i can be cheeky but yeah instagram is really where i can i can um speak more freely and uh in terms of like things about my mental health because it's very very scary to do on youtube you know um so anyways if you stuck with me throughout this i really really appreciate it let me know what you think can you relate life is hard <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!